They're two of your own. They're two of my own, yeah. The, the first one is the mouse in the house. And the second one is Bin's birthday. Bin's birthday. Which I called after Bin Linen. It was on his 80th birthday. We had a, we were above inside in the centre. His birthday was always in the, during the Willie Clancy school. And uh, we were inside in the centre hotel. A small little room in there at the back. And there was, you know, a private party. And um, I think I and myself were after playing the two tunes on the concert tonight and on the Tuesday night. Those two tunes. And I had no name for the second one. So Terry Wilson was inside there and Terry said, call it after Bin, Bin's birthday. So that's how that got his name. The mouse in the house was, I was sitting here inside, just over there in the chair. And uh, a mouse started running over here, back and forth, up here in the ceiling one night. And he was doing back and forth. And after a while, this thing came into my head and that was the first tune. So he put the slide into your head? He put the slide into my head. I don't know where the mouse went, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, Connie, um, where exactly are we now? Kilnamartra is where I'm living all my life. I've been here all my life. I was born and reared in the south, and I've lived there until so far. I don't think I'll move at all now, but uh, Kilnamartra, Balivuig is the townland here, and uh, Kilnamartra is the parish. And where did you first hear the music? In, in this house? In this house, yeah. My mother played uh, Melodion, Tin Key Melodion. Played a bit like, you know, she wouldn't have an awful lot of tunes and she played for, she'd play for a set. And she had enough tunes for a couple of sets and, you know, for a few house dances and things like that. So did you start with the Melodion? I tried it, but I didn't like it at all. I don't know why. And I tried Mount Argon for peace and I tried a whistle and I tried everything. And, you know, I got the idea that there wasn't, for some reason, I thought the Tin Key Melodion at the time, I was very young, I thought that there wasn't enough range in it. You know, that there was only one octave, really. And I hadn't sense enough to go down and start up again, like, you know, as you know. So I kind of turned against that. So after, when I was about uh, 12 years, um, an aunt of mine, she lived here with us for a while, and uh, she bought me a, a fiddle. Oh, would that have been the first fiddle you'd seen? The first, very little anyway, very little I'd seen. I had the idea, I thought I'd play, learn how to play a fiddle, like, you know, and even though I didn't know what it was about at all. I got the fiddle and I couldn't tune it, I didn't know how to tune it at all, I had a clue. I was self-taught, I never went for lessons anymore, there was no lessons at the time, there was no one teaching, there was no one doing nothing on the... I'm sure the same as yourself, probably. Had to learn it from scratch, and although maybe there was music in your household that you had. No, I learned by ear. There was I never went to a, never went to a class. Anymore. Yeah, same as myself. I never went to class. I did go afterwards. Then when I was about, I was able to play the fiddle. Then maybe when I was 17, 18, I went. Into, I used to cycle into McCroom to learn how to read music, and um, I learned just how to read it and and, and transcribe it and and that sort of thing. Beyond that, I didn't do any more. I never got any uh, lessons on, on how to hold a fiddle or how to do anything with it. And who would have been the greats that you'd have met in your, your teens? Um, well, I suppose in my teens, I didn't meet anyone because I wasn't going anywhere. I had no care. I had no means of traveling. There was no music around this area of not at all, really. So I think the first people that I met was the likes of Dan Cronin, was a son of Bess Cronin, the singer, famous singer. I met John Connell, no relation of my own, who was a very good singer, who I'm sure you heard of. And uh, uh, John played a fiddle as well. So I had I used to go to Balboon, I might meet him, we'd have a, I'd have a tune there now younger. So uh, John was a great a great repertoire of music and songs and like Dan Cronin was bringing music from during the Warriors, he was he was drawing turf from Carcassonne into Cork City, and he was to somewhere back around Glenbay somewhere. I think there was a priest there. He was Father Jones, and he got tunes there from this Father Jones, and just from there the the did new. Did he play one. Father Jones? I don't know much about him. Him sure he did. He played something, but Dan played the flute and, and pipes as well. But um. He, it was from there, from that Father John's, the long note, the tune, the long note came. 
originally. And when you started, when you at that that age, learning a, a tune, how would you go about uh, learning it? Or if <laughs> if you had a show for the first time ever, and you you didn't read music, and how would you go about? Kind of uh, we we, we had we had a we had a radio. Obviously, I was radio. There was no when when I was the, the the there was no electricity here for a number of years. First, you know, we had we had gas lights and things like that. But um, uh, we had the radio then battery driven radio. The, the wet and dry battery. Uh, exactly. That's the battery was a ton weight. First, they it up in the back of a bike into town to charge it. We had to got him chrome to charge the bloody battery. But anyway. Uh, Kiran and the likes of those programs were on the radio at the time and that was the first music I really heard and the first time that I heard the tunes that I really wanted to learn, you know, and uh, no tape recorders. You heard the tune, you probably brought the first part, maybe the first night or you brought a piece of it. You waited then for maybe, you could wait for a month or longer for to get the second part or even to get the first part right. So it was a very, very long process for to try and uh, get it one tune and by God but you valued the tune and you got it off N nowadays they can learn a tune in five minutes because they can keep winding back the whole that's tape recorders or whatever they have you'd wind back could take a couple of weeks <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> yeah and when would you have met the the the, the, the Shliam Luachrub musicians then um, Padre O'Keefe did you ever meet him no I never met Padre O'Keefe he was gone before I, I got as far as Shlieve Lokra. But I got, the, 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 there was a, a friend of mine that lived down here near the halfway over beyond the other side of Kildamartran. And he was working for some telephone company at the time, going back years. And he used to call to the, he was called to the factory in Ratmore, the chocolate factory there, working at telephones there. And he got to know, he met Johnny Leary there. Johnny was working in the chocolate factory at the time. So he, I, somewhere I met him anyway, and he said to me, I'm after meeting this uh, Johnny Leary. He said, do you ever hear him? He's a very good accordion. He's supposed to be a very good accordion player. I said, I'd love to meet him. So he said, I'll arrange and we'll try and go back there some night. He had a car. So he um, got on to me then after that. And he said, I've, uh, I've uh, uh, arranged for to meet Johnny Leary in Guinea Willa, and he'll take us to Dennis Murphy. First of all, I did ha I knew Dennis Murphy because I hear him on the radio. He was big time on the radio at the time by the likes of Kiran and those. So we went back anyway and went into Guinea Willa and went into the pub there and had a couple of drinks or whatever. And Johnny said, he isn't here at all. We'll go up to the host him. We know for once. So we went up to Dennis Murphy's house and we stayed there until three or four or five o'clock in the morning. So it was my first time meeting Dennis and having music with him. And I had a tape recorder that night, but strangely enough, it was a reel to open spool tape and the tape is not, I don't think, to there anymore. Was he, was Dennis, what were your first impressions of him? Uh, well, he was a really welcoming man into the house. Like he really welcomed us and he played there was another man there too, the same that he was Max Sweeney or Sweeney, small little man playing a fiddle. A very good fiddle player. But he was he was he was a great asset to the night because he 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 reminded Dennis of an awful lot of tunes that Dennis couldn't think of, you know. And uh, kept him going all night. And it was um Dennis was 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 the most generous man with me. And Johnny Leary, like you knew Johnny, you know, they, they were basically the same. They were very generous with their music and with their, especially with their music. And Julie Mary was inside and she made tea and we had a super night there. And I'm sure on the night in particular that this, this, this man, Max Sweeney, I never forgive you, he was old at the time, but he was he was really a great addition to Dennis because he kept reminding Dennis of, of slides and polkas all night, you know, tunes that I never, well, I hadn't heard her until then anyway, you know, but Dennis knew them all, like, you know, he, was, he was positively st stirring it for him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he was stirring the soup. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, they were very witty, humorous people. Oh, they? God, yeah. Like there was one time, I met Dennis then in, uh, for four, five, six years after that. But um, one evening in Castle Island, there was a flak hall there and I went into this, it was a wet all evening and we went into this bar up the town on the left hand side going up. There was a shop in front of the bar. It was one of these usual Castle Island things where you had a grocery shop and that in front of the paradise. Salt tea and bread and all the rest of it. And then at the back, there was a little door going in and in at the back then you had um, bar and they were playing music there. And uh, Dennis Murphy was there. So uh, the man at the bar didn't really want to leave me in at all. He said, there's too many inside there, you can't go in there. So I didn't see me and Dennis said, leave that boy in. He said, he's very good. So I was left in anyway. And who was there the same evening was, uh, he was in his honeymoon, was Des Mulcair. However long Des Mulcair, that's how long ago it is. But uh, Des was there and I sat down anyway. And there was a, a woman sitting right alongside Dennis and she was really, she was traveling with Dennis for the, the night. She was his neighbor. And uh, Dennis introduced me to this woman. And the woman said, uh, uh, our Dennis said to me, she's my next door neighbor, he said. She's, he said, she's only living down at the bottom of the garden. And uh, in fact, he said, there's only a hundred to cabbage between us. <laughs> <laughs> and he had that kind of wit, like, we knock a hundred to cabbage with a bundle, like, you know, if we spread it out and sat it. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, she, she was there with him. And I think he brought her for a purpose that she did not like fiddles. Because she, she said to me, what do you play? And I said, I play a fiddle. Oh, for God's sake. She said, why don't you learn an accordion? <laughs> <laughs> Dennis enjoyed that. He thought it was great fun, you know. <laughs> I remember a time the story you had about him that you asked somebody, somebody who's, who's kind of, is he married or something? <laughs> Tell us that story. You're sure we fools about it, don't you? I kind of remember that. I don't remember it properly, you know. <laughs> you don't have to name anyone. Like, I wouldn't know them anyway. I wouldn't either, to be yeah. honest. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, have you been, have you, what, what kind of, have you toured and stuff with the music down through the years then? Well, not, not an awful lot. Uh, Round on, I, I've been to, I suppose I've been to Europe a few times and I've been to, as you know, America a few times. And uh, I remember a great weekend we had in Chicago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was music there too. Well, the, the thing about it, I can't remember a lot of it at all. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you, you went to, to Cork then, to, to, to the university teaching? I did. Right, I you? went to, to Cork. Actually, I, went to, I, I started university in, in going back as far as 1983, I think, or something like that. Or 84, I'm not sure. But um, my other Sullivan was the professor in there at the time. And he rang me here at home and asked me, he said, would I give uh, a class inside in, in UCC? And I said, I couldn't do that at all. I said, no, I wouldn't leave the university. I'm, I'm the notion about that. I wouldn't know anything about it. So he said, look, come in for one day. Just one day, one hour. That's all you need to do. I won't touch you anymore after that. So I said, I'd do the one day then. And he said, look, see what it's like anyway. He said, we're... We're just all normal people here in the side and he said, don't worry about it at all. So I didn't anyway and I gave, I gave one class there and at the end of the class, me all came out to me and he said, would you do another one? And I'm still there. <laughs> and I'm still there until now. Do, do you like that, passing it on? Oh, very much so, yeah. Very much so. Very much. And I pass it on to Anya's little, I'm doing a class, well, she's the only one I'm doing outside of university. I like that too, there's no harm to, it's great to see them. Kids above. So it's probably a good feeling to have seen your own mother playing and now your, your daughter and all yeah, his children. Yeah, yeah. And I, I thought hanging ourselves. Yeah. As we didn't kill each other. No, <laughs> we're still talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and what was it like for you to be, to be, to be here at the music around the house? Um, well, I suppose there was always music in the house here, even in this room here. I remember there's a drawer over there, there was a record player inside there. And I remember coming down here as a very small child, just even, just, we had records, there was like, they're actually in the press there now, we had records, and I remember Dad used to put on these records for me, and you'd come down, you'd have to listen, but there was, it was very small, I remember, I'd be kind of chatting about whatever was going on, he'd say, no, we have to listen now, listen to the music, you know, but I can remember musicians coming to the house, 
as a child, you know, different musicians in an ocean. It was always very informal here. There was no such thing as uh, formal lessons as such. You'd kind of be taken aside every now and again and maybe given a bit of a tutoring. <laughs> and that was it, you know. I suppose I remember as well, like in, in my teens, especially going to Knock Degree, the two of us used to go to Knock Degree a good bit. We used to go on the Friday well, night. And, there, yeah, yeah. and we used to go on the... Sunday night as well. We'd go yeah, to night so, yeah. and yeah. And yeah. Knock Degree was, was a full swing, like, you know. Yeah. That yeah. Calls. Oh, Collins, Collins, yeah, course, yeah, 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 and then there was a uh, good few musicians just come here to the house as well. The likes of Seamus McMahon, who was a great visitor here, he'd be in a regular basis, and he brings somebody with him. I remember one time he brought Bobby Casey in here with him. Well, Bobby stayed until I think they stayed for nearly 24 hours. <laughs> uh, he was there. The likes of Nicholas Tobin came in here and uh. uh a lot more of them. Jim O'Connor. Jim O'Connor, of course. Lee. Tony Linan. What a state show, All yeah. those, they, they, they all Jackie, stayed, they used to stay here. Jackie Daly, when I was very, very small. I remember Jackie Daly and I was really Jackie small. Daly came here, yeah. I was very small. Yeah. I gave a share, of, at one stage I gave music to Jackie. I think they used it dead on and afterwards, you know. Same, some of the tunes, like. For you, Connie, to learn a tune from, from recording of somebody that you never met, would there be a difference between that and learning a tune from, from sitting beside somebody, from, from a human being? For a well, oh yeah, very, very much so. Uh, I would think so anyway. I think that, that if, you'll, if you're, uh, we say, learning a tune live from somebody, you're getting a certain amount of what they're doing as well. I think that the, the, the certain amount of the, like no matter who you get a tune from, there's a certain amount of their style going to come with it, I think. You know, so their, their tune is their story, kind of thing. It is, and it's kind of part of the technique. I don't know, but I think a lot of that will come as well, like, you know, uh, it will rub off with the tune. You know, I think no matter where you learn, like, there's certain things we'll say, no matter who you're learning a tune from, could be anybody, they'll do something with the tune that you like. And you, you I have a tendency to try and repeat that particular phrase or that particular role or whatever it is uh, to put it into the tune forevermore afterwards, you know. And would, would, do you think the, the, the playing of the music would, would have anything to do with your sanity or, or your insanity? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too sure about that. Is. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, mo the, the mood that you'd be in for playing, like, would you? Would, 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 well, I think that that uh, <laughs> it definitely changes your 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 humour at a particular time when we hear when you hear music. It does something for you that that uh, that will uh, entice you to play, or, or you will get really mad for to play music, like you know. But uh, I don't know about the sanity part or insanity, but. Uh, I suppose there's a little bit about that. I think there's a bit of the insanity there anyway, you know? And the, the, the gown to the gull to the sun, so it kind of yeah. takes in all the emotions too, I suppose. Like there was, at one stage, when I was, before I composed um, the, the book, before I started putting the book together, I, I had a very good friend and he was, I played with the band in Dublin one time, it was the Green Lineage Cayley Band. And uh, Johnny McNamara, was, did you ever meet Johnny McNamara? Can't say it. He was the leader, he was a box player. He was from Drimmon in Dublin. He was very close to the Keynes. He was a great friend of the Keynes as well, of Sean and, and uh, Seamus. But uh, I rang him at some stage anyway, and he, he had great wit, he had great Dublin wit, like, you know, and I said to him, Johnny, I'm uh, thinking of putting a, a book of tunes together. I said, I suppose I'm a bit mad. No, he said, Connie, you're madder. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. and I think he was right. <laughs> yeah. I, where did the, 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 I suppose, the, the, the deed or the, the desire or the whatever, where did it, for you to start composing in the first place? I think the first uh, instance of, uh, again, there was an Oireachtas in Cork, in, in Cork City. It was down in Moors Hotel, I think was the time. It was, but there was, uh, this is going back many, many years. But the... I went into the Oireachtas anyway. Oireachtas was a big thing at the time for more so than now for traditional music and for KD bands and all sorts of competitions there. But uh, I, I went in this way of a night anyway and uh, Declan Talon, do, do, do you know Declan Talon? Yeah, he won newly composed ballad at the, 
or new lick post song at the Oroctus. And there was a prize, a check, uh, as a prize. So the first thing Dick Lonwood did with his check was go in and um, change it and drink it. By the time I got in there that night anyway, Dick Lon was gone crazy. He had too much drink and he was, he was a fierce, nice man. I really loved him, man. But um, it was ta I was talking to him. We had a great old chat anyway, and good chat and everything was grand. And Dick Lon was a pure gentleman, like. But um, again, I went in the following night there and uh, I was talking to Met Dick Lon. And God, I said you were in a very bad way last night, Dick Lon. He was grand then, like, you know, but he said, oh, I saw. Yes, I said you were very wrong. Was I that bad? I just he said I can't think of it at all, can you? He said, I, I'm not feeling good today. And I said, um, do you remember it at all, Dick Lan? No. I said, do you know that you tore my jacket? Oh, for God's sake. I didn't, did I? He believed it like. He totally believed it. And he was going, Oh, I'm so sorry. Jesus, I never did anything like that in my life. And he was he was nearly down in one knee in the finish like and I said eventually I said to him, Look, Declan, I'm only fooling you. You didn't do anything like that. Oh, thanks be to God. He said, Compose a tune, the Torton Jacket. And that's how it happened. But I composed that. That was the first tune that I what really got like? going, yeah. It was Declan Talon that that, 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 uh, uh, yeah. that, that uh, brought about your. your it your, was. Your, that was. Your, inspired I did, you to compose. Well, I think that was nearly the first one. I think that I. I did something for uh, for uh, a script program or something before that, but I, that went. I have no idea what it was or anything. But that was really the first one, and I didn't compose anything for a long, long time after that again. You know, it was the first one. I just yeah. did that. And but give us the tall jacket anyway, yeah, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to play something with it? Well, the Primrose Lass, I think, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah.
it's there in the changing. You didn't know what, whether you were going again or whether. You had a fair idea. Yeah. Didn't know what <laughs> yeah. But it was more than kind of. There was kind of a kind of instinct. A instinct. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So when when you set about composing that first one, did you sit down and say, "I'm going to play. I'm going to write." Or did you did you wait for the moment for it to come through your head while you were walking or whatever? I don't know. I I uh, I did don't it take know. Take you long, I, like after that. I haven't a clue. Yeah. Round on, I don't know. I don't know how long it took me to make up my mind that the tune, or maybe that I got an idea that I was composing a tune and composed the tune and said, thought to Declan Tellen and said, uh, I'll call it to the torn jacket. I don't know. And in composing now, would you would you actually come in here someplace and say, oh God, I won't no. get up off the chair to have a tune? No, God, no, I couldn't do it at all. I couldn't do that. I'd... Um, you used to tape them a bit when I was younger. Uh, well, I'd, 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 I'd tape them going back years. I uh, said, I would know, dictaphone or something, yeah. or that I'd um, maybe put down two bars of a tune or something like that. Sometimes it would work, more times it wouldn't. I couldn't add any more to it to be scrapped again out of to. Just forget about it. It's like no big deal, like a bit like building a wall. Some well, the wall would stay there. This wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, would you kind of get a tune to walk with the road or down by the field or? Yeah, I would. I'd tell us. Yeah, I'd be whistling away. There'd be tunes running around inside my head, like, and I might think, God, that's a that's a good start to a tune. Now, you know, sometimes it work more times it wouldn't. And would you sing it into the phone or something, or? Um, or do you write the notes now? I would have to write or uh, write it down, some piece of it, or else uh, do it into a phone or, or into the, uh, when I had a phone, the, the, I'd say, since I got a smartphone, I didn't come out with any tune, I'd say, but anyway, <laughs> no dictaphone or something like that I'd have there, you know, no, some tape or tape recorder or whatever. Just a piece of the tune, maybe the first part or something like that, and you add away to it then after that, it is working. Sometimes you'd, I'd have a good first part of a tune, and I could put on nothing. I couldn't put on, on anything so I'd have to scrap it, get rid of it, you know, because it wouldn't work. I couldn't just put a second part of the tune. And did you get into a kind of a, a, a mould of composing then, or to, to, to say that you had a, a body of, of work to, to, I think to say, I did, did you have a book for Yeah, those? I think I had that for a while. Well, I, th I think that was what happened when I got the notion of doing the book. You see, there was a lot of people who were saying that I should do another CD or whatever, you know. Uh, I did a CD in the year 99. Which was around that, um, I'd say. 2000. Yeah. And um, I, for Shanaki, I did a, a, um, that was a CD that time, yeah, for Shanaki. And uh, Dan Collins, I'm sure you met Dan. And uh, after that, there was... Uh, um, team people asking me, so would I do another CD? And I thought that CDs were kind of going out and I didn't know on the hill, like, you know, I didn't think, I had much interest in a CD, but I got this idea in and that I'd, I had a few tunes composed. I had a few, few, few tunes on the first CD and that's Kjol, was it Kjol Kilimatra? Kjol Kilimatra. Yeah, it was the first CD and um, by Shanaki. And there was a few new tunes in that. I had a few composed for that. And would, you, would you have fine days then that a, that a tune would come to be simpler than other days? Oh, yeah, definitely so. Oh, very much so. Oh. I think to be, it depend, to, again, it depends on my form and if I'm after hearing music before it and, you know, like you said a while ago, when you hear music or when you get the humour in you for sitting down to play tunes, I think you would have the same, not the same, exactly the same, but maybe something like it for learning how to art get the humour for to compose a tune. And when, you've, when, you, when you know yourself then that you have a nice tune, is, is, it, is it a kind of a, a feeling that somebody has gifted, gifted it to you or that you actually, where the hell it came from? Like? A bit of water, I suppose. You know, I think it's, it's the, there is satisfaction in having a new tune if it's a good tune, you know, and feel yourself that you have something good. Uh, created or achieved or whatever. It is a good feeling, like, it's definitely a good feeling. And it, I suppose it gives you, um, I don't know, it is just self-satisfaction, I suppose, more than anything else. And uh, it never worry me if, if the tune would go or if anybody would ever play it or 
I wouldn't mind which leg if I liked it myself. Have you ever had the experience of maybe sitting at a bar or something and musicians that are walking into a pub and hearing your tune played? Oh, I have, of course, yeah. Well, it is, I, I don't know, it doesn't do anything for me really, you know. It is, I suppose it's okay, it is, it is a, a, a feeling of recognition by other musicians and that's nice in itself too, I suppose, you know. It wouldn't go to your head? God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't start jumping up and down anyway. <laughs> you played with, you met uh, Judah Clifford and you met... Oh, I did. You, I saw you a few times playing with Dennis McMahon. Oh, I played with Dennis did. for years. Yeah. My son and Dennis were great friends and we did, an, we did a lot of programmes together, you know, in Dublin and different places and gigs all over the country as well. But uh, I don't know how did that strike up, how did we get... To, I did play with the Desmond Kelly Band in competition a couple of times and I played with the Brasna. Before that, I suppose I got to know Dennis through that more than anything else, and we kind of, I don't know, it was a strange combination, just two fiddles, like, but it worked, it was fine. I was watching your book there, and all the all the names of tunes that you have, and at, there seem to be local place names that you've used. They are, they're mainly the local areas in the pictures, I went around with, I mainly went around with the camera myself and took pictures of the, of all the little uh, places that I, I named. The tunes, the tunes after, after yeah. no. Yeah. So it, it seemed a bit almost like a, like a, you know, a, a musical guidebook to, to this area. I suppose it is. Yeah, that's what it is. I suppose really. Yeah, you could call it that. And uh, I call the book, uh, body in the Smoothie because of the fact that I suppose there's a lot of uh, uh, memories associated with a lot of the tunes that were in it. I think that kind of gave, gave me the um, 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 idea of uh, calling him. Like the areas that I, I lived in and, and in, in, when I was travelling around as young, that I knew all those. The style of playing that you have here, do you think if you were born somewhere else, if you were born in the Midlands and maybe born in France or someplace, would the, the, the music be comp that you'd be playing completely different? Does, oh, does totally the place yeah. where you, where well, I'd say if I was born in Donegal, I'd be playing Donegal music and I'd have a Donegal accent, not a Cork half of Kerry accent like I have, you know. So uh, definitely, I'd be playing different music. So there's a sense of place always in the music? Well, oh, well I think so anyway. Firmly believe that. Like there's a sense of, of, of that's the music that I and, and myself are playing here, this is totally local music like, and we have a tendency like, I brought out a record uh, last year herself and Francis, and there's an awful lot of uh, Kerry polkas and slides in it, and Kerry really Kerry music like. I, if I was born in, we'll say in Donegal, for instance, I w would be playing Donegal music, totally playing Donegal music, which is great music. I think it's wonderful. They have wonderful fiddle players and, and great music up there. And, and uh, uh, I was very friendly with James Byrne there. You know, James, you probably met him, yeah. And he asked me, he wanted me to go up there at some stage to the some festival that he ran above somewhere. Just be, That was the last time he rang me. And he died very unexpectedly afterwards. But I was great friends with James, and we had great, I had great time for his music, and vice versa. For me, the, the, the Shlia uh, music is, has, has all, the, all the emotions that dealt with sadness, with humour, they dealt with humour, with humour. They, 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 they told so many stories, and by, by certain play, if you told them somewhere else, they might turned out to be kind of filthy, but there, there was no dirt, there was no filth, there, no, was, no there was no bad intention whatsoever no. in the telling of them. No. I always like, talked like, about, uh, the, about the gardens. Yeah, like, uh, did Mr. McMahon just tell the, the yarn about that um, somewhere back around, I know back around Valley Desmond or maybe Shkarta Glen or something like that, there was an all night of music there and Din Tarrant and Padre O'Keefe, the two of them, were drinking all night, nothing to eat since the evening before, and they were coming home from, walking home in the morning sometime, early in the morning, six o'clock, walking home from this thing, and they were passing over, I think it was through Belly Desmond, or some of these towns back makes no difference, but um, Din Tarrant said to Padraig, there's smoke over there, he said, well, we go over there, and the man knew the area well, and he said, no, we won't go to that hostel, we'll keep going. 
So they came on another bit anyway. And, uh, Din was big. T I think Din was. I don't know him at all, but uh, he put his nose in there and he said, "You know," he said, "I smell meat frying." He said, and Paul, he said, where? He said, in that house over there. Oh, he said, two old lads living there. He said, together, there are two brothers, two old bachelors there. And he said that they'd hardly give themselves enough to eat. God didn't, didn't say there's a smell of meat frying there. I can smell it. We'll go over there. Don't then, he said, because if there's a smell of meat frying, he said, one of them is out there falling into the fire. But <laughs> 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 so when you, you, you were going to talk about a couple of a few polkas. Yeah, but these are two, two shows that you composed. Yeah, yeah, there are two more that I composed. What's, what's the, the, what? the Return of Youth, isn't it? Return of Youth. That that was, uh, I, I actually called that after a, a, a night back in Donna. This is fairly recently back in Donna in Malibuana. Padre Lachlan was there with somebody some period before he died and he was playing and I thought he was absolutely supported the same night. Played great music and he looked young, younger than I ever see him, you know. And I called it, I composed that tune afterwards and I called it The Return of Youth. And then the other one? The High Nelly Polka. The High Nelly was, of course, called after the bicycle. That was, that was kind of a common mode of transport here in this area at, at one stage. It was probably was carry to High Nelly bicycle, like, you know. So. Anyway, we'll, we'll try Yeah. Felt that that uh, that musicians have 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 uh, won up on 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 footballers or hurlers and stuff like that. That they're kind of they reach their prime in their thirties and that's them then having spent twenty twenty yeah, yeah, thirty years yeah, yeah. working hard at their profession. Next thing they have not the physical yeah, they're too old, uh, yeah. agility to do it. Yeah. Whereas uh, our age now, like in, uh, you could play with somebody who's. 40 years younger than you were. Oh, yes. Well, 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 the music, to, to my mind, it cuts out, totally cuts out age. 
You know, it, it, it creates, there is no gap between a person my age and even Anya's kids when it comes down to music. And they're really young, like, you know, but uh, uh, it, it breaks that gap down totally. You know, there is no, there is no sense of modernize, it doesn't modernize or it doesn't change with the times or it does, you know, the traditional music still stays, stays as it was, to my mind, uh, 50 years ago or whatever. I think it changed. If you go back again, like if you go back, maybe a century, it is it was different music then. I think. I find it's harder to, to, to accustom myself to music that was written hundred years ago, or oh well, well, we say hundred and fifty years ago, not a hundred, going back beyond that, back to the eighteen hundreds, like you know, I think music was different then, all right, but nowadays, like you say, there is no difference. There's no gap, age gap. Yeah, I suppose maybe like, like, like Padre Lachlan playing, playing with you and your musicians that night for you to be playing with your grandchildren. It's, it's the, like the poker, the return of youth for you to be playing with them. Yeah. You're back in the childish mind again. I suppose so, yeah, 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 that's true, yeah. Depending on, on what direction we look at it from, like, you know. And uh, the, the fact that you that you can't really associate with music of 100, 150 years ago, that's that's almost, this place was a different country altogether, it is now. So Much it's a different of course, experience. Yeah. So. Oh, obviously, very changed altogether. You know, I'm sure that there's, uh, if you go back uh, 150 years ago, there's no name in this townland here that is the same anymore. And they're all changed, gone, or even to the farming country, like, and, and uh, I'm sure all the farms have virtually changed names. So I suppose the music and, and, and the songs give the, so, fe the feelings and the. the, the, the you, 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 uh, Describes the, the the happiness and the heart of the time. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, and and the time that they were living, you know, a particular time. So having having spoken about your 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 beginnings with the music and your life in it, uh, st sitting back with your pipe, how how would you like to? What would you? What to you would be a beautiful future? Well, to be very honest with you, one short answer is nowhere. I, I wouldn't want the music to go anywhere. And just stay as it is for another hundred years. I think music is great as it is. I think it's, it's better now than it ever was. So what would you be looking for, you know, in, in, in music? I think that the young people that are growing up today are really great. Some of them are, are top class musicians, playing great music to my mind, you know? And I think, I think it's just about, nearly about perfect, like. You know, I don't know whether that answers you properly or not, but uh, that is my attitude. What would you think, Aya? Yeah, I think the same. Stay the same. It's going good. <laughs> you know. Right, give us one to, to finish us off, so. On, okay. that, on that note. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is Pony in the Sweet is the name of the jig, and the second one is just an ordinary jig that's uh, the one that I got from the Singing of this Cronin, the the what lady of the kitchen by the door. The other two girls.
Prvi ili Bahovec? Hvala za hvala. Hvala za hvala. Tako se ne bo včeri.